Well, about, about um, we've been working with GMI now since 2000. Uh, at, least, at least it's been 20 years since we started working. Uh, but uh, about in 2000, we started Gospel Ministries International, just kind of to form a, uh, a corporate um, backing to the work around the world. And uh, it's been growing. Um, when we got involved in media here in Bolivia years ago, 12 years ago, uh, we realized how efficient it was. We realized that uh, uh, that it could it could bring in the best speakers from around the world. It, it could uh, you can bring you can correct issues, you can teach people, and you have access to all of the all of the public. So then we started doing the same thing in Europe, and we have 11 channels in Europe. Mm -hmm. And then we started doing it in Asia, and we started doing it in Africa, and and then we did it. We tried to start in Australia. It, it was a little bit more difficult. Boy, there was a big storm against it, but. But then a few years later, we got a chance to start in New Zealand, and that thing just really took off. And we have the First Light Broadcasting Network there that has been now almost almost uh, coming up on five years of broadcasting in every single city of New Zealand, plus on satellite now. And it's been very, very positive for church growth, but it also has a storm of, uh, of opposition coming from the division. Uh, nobody accuses us of doing anything wrong. They just don't like to have another a network, I guess, that, that they don't control. But uh, because of Australia, South Pacific Division, and because of, uh, of Europe especially, uh, where maybe the theology is not standard Adventist theology, uh, what was happening was they officially requested the General Conference to try to stop these networks. So um, uh, Pastor Ted Wilson, who has been a friend for many years, um, he told me, David, man, you have, uh, everywhere you go, the church is growing. We know you love the church. We know you're loyal to the, the mission of the church, but it, you got a lot of enemies. And I said, well, they happen to be the same ones you have. <laughs> and and uh, he said, yes. Um, but he said, I don't need any more. And I said, he said, I'm going to turn your case over to a vice president to deal with because I cannot personally take my time to deal with it. I can, I can understand that, even though I don't understand that he would, knowing that something is of God, he would not support it. But I do understand that that is not his responsibility primarily to, de to defend me. And he has other responsibilities, by all means. So uh, he turned me over, he turned our case over to a vice president um, that was very harsh. Uh, in fact, he's known for his harshness. I wish it had been another vice president, maybe from Africa or something. But, but he turned us over to uh, Mike Ryan, which was uh, very, dealt with us rather harshly. <clears throat> but... But um, we did. We did go forward, and eventually they came to visit us. The secretary uh, of the General Conference came with uh, Mike Ryan, and uh, they came to see my wife and I. Uh, my wife and I uh, had a meeting for about two hours with them. Uh, the, main, the main purpose of their visit was how to stop GMI. Um, and they said, you know, you're working and opening up projects without permission. I said, well... Uh, we try to coordinate, we try to call the, uh, all the union presidents, and we do our best to coordinate. And they said, no, it's not enough to try to coordinate. You need to ask permission before you do it. I said, well, that's not biblical. Well, that's what the policy says. That's only what part of the policy says. The other part of the policy, point four, says that we must not, we must specifically, explicitly state we're not under the control of the church. So which part of the policy? No, we only care about point six. We don't care about point four. I know, but it's still policy. No, we don't care about it. You have to abide by point six. And so I don't have to abide by point four. We only care about point six. So uh, I said, well, I work with the board. Let me take it to my board. If the board tells me that I should sign, I'll do it. If my board, we, we work as a team. And if my board says no, I will follow my board because I said, because if I work by myself without my board, I, 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 there's a saying that if we don't hang together, we would certainly hang separately. <laughs> and so uh, I met with my board. We have four ordained ministers and, uh, and uh, four retired presidents of large institutions, self-supporting institutions. And the unanimous decision was absolutely not. No supporting ministry will agree to always abide, always uh, never move forward unless they have permission. That, that violates biblical principles, it violates the spirit of prophecy clearly, and we cannot abide by it. I said, okay, well, Unfortunately, I'm the one that takes the heat, even though you all vote, but I will work together with you because I have a good board, and uh, our board, we stick together. Mm -hmm. And that's why GMI is really a solid organization, because we have good people. 
that, that keep it balanced and keep it going the right direction. Um, anyway, uh, because we were not willing to sign that we would, they asked us to close down all our ministries for 10 years. And uh, we said, well, uh, does that only the television networks or does that involve the airplanes and the lunches and the school, everything? You have to close everything down for 10 years and we can fix the problem. I said, I know, but then we'll lose our salvation over that. Because when God says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, and thousands are coming into the church every year, then I will be responsible for their blood if we close it down. But the board said no. And so I wrote them a kind letter and said, I, we can abide by the entire K0505, all six points, but not just point six. They would not accept that. They only want point six, and they ignore the other five points. So uh, that, they did send out a letter four years ago. Mike Ryan wrote the letter. He didn't sign it. He just sent it out without a signature. Uh, uh, so Mike Ryan wrote the letter and he faxed it from the president, the, 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 the president's fax to all the division presidents. Mm -hmm. At that point, this, uh, for example, the union president here in Bolivia said, I don't need to make this public. We're working fine together. I don't want to mess up our relationship. Uh, the Inter-American division didn't forward it to anybody. So wherever we were friends, remain friends and wherever the enemies they just use it as an extra thing to throw at us mm -hmm. uh, nobody accused us of uh, uh, we're not accused of bad theology or we're not accused of of anything wrong except not obeying that policy which requires permission before opening up a project uh, that that is something that is the only thing that I'm aware of that is the main complaint mm -hmm. um, now I thought I thought it would be nice with the years that it would slowly drift into past history. Mm -hmm. And it's been four years ago. Most people aren't really thinking about it too much. But uh, this recent letter from Pastor Ted Wilson in which he, he restates the position four years ago and in addition throws in a personal, throws in his personal opinion that he does not support me either. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, that's inappropriate for a president to do that. Uh, a president, the responsibility of a president is to state the position of the church to state the position of the committee. If there was a committee that dealt with it, he can state that. For a president to say, I don't support it, is, it, is totally out of place. Hmm. Personal opinion is not something that, that is, uh, is supposed to be a part of decisions by the church. If we're gonna get into personal opinions, it becomes a personal matter, no longer is it a denominational matter. And uh, so I believe, that, I believe that that was a, uh, um, a sad thing that he said that, that lowers the status of a president to say I don't either um, but in any case in any case uh, they have asked him to do that I'm sure it, my wife and I both agree that Pastor Ted Wilson normally on his own would not do that uh, he's not he's not that kind of person but um, but I know that he's under a lot of pressure the South American division is number number one uh, he, he listens very carefully to the South American division president because he gets most of his votes from here in the Inter-American Division. And, and so, um, he, uh, I'm sure that he did it under pressure. But that's okay, he did it. And because he did it, then it, uh, it wasn't just a letter that went to a few people, it was a letter that was released on the internet. Once that letter is, you know, it's addressed, not to a person either, it's addressed to the public. So, uh, once that letter came out, I was pretty distressed about it. I, I took it to the Lord in prayer. And I said, Lord, you know, we're trying to do the best to coordinate. Uh, the more influence we have, the more nation, the, st the stations we put up, the more airplanes, the more orphanages, the more schools, the more we do deal with it, it seems like the more hostility there is. And even though we do our very best to work together, it seems like nothing you can do can, can fix the problem. I've tried on several occasions. My board has tried to write letters to Pastor Ted Wilson. He's never responded to... Uh, so, and a friend of mine wrote to him and he responded right away saying that we don't want to work together. But when we write and say, let us meet together and try to work it out, he never answers. So uh, as I was praying, I was saying, Lord, what do I do? Uh, I want to, I want to uh, be respectful, but on the other hand, and the Lord said, don't feel discouraged. This is one of the most beautiful opportunities you will ever have to deal openly with the issue. And so I realized that once he releases a letter to the public, I'm also allowed to, uh, in, in proper protocol, I'm allowed to respond publicly. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote that letter and I held it for several days. I prayed about it. I changed a few things. I made it, changed a few words to make it softer. And I tried to make it as kind and respectful as possible. And yet to lay the issues as they are, transparently before the people. And 
and I believe it's been very, very positive. To be honest, uh, the vast majority, over 90% of the feedback from my response has been very positive. Uh, I don't do things because of support. I don't do political things. But that letter has generated tremendous support for our ministry because the people can tell the difference in the tones of the letter. One of them is a personal issue uh, and, a, and, a, and a denominational issue to try to stop the work and others. Uh, and my response, hopefully, is just an, an open attempt uh, in a Christian humility to try to fix the problem. Uh, I'm not sure if he will respond or not. I'm not sure if he will open it or not. If he does, we will be delighted. Some of our board members will go together to meet, to meet with him, and we will work on see what we can do to work together. That's what God wants. If they decide not to answer, then the consequence is on their hands. It's not on ours. It is now in the open. At this point, they can't wash their hands and say, he doesn't want to. Mm. No. Now the whole world knows that we want to work together, but they have not opened that opportunity. So, so I, I'm grateful for the positive feedback, and I want to thank all of you that, uh, that responded positively, encouraging. It has been an encouragement. Uh, most of all, I just want God's people to, to be nurtured, to grow. I want God's, the mission of the church to to uh, uh, be accomplished. I want God's people to get ready. Jesus is coming very soon and there's no time for politics. One thing I will not be involved in is politics. Uh, politics is the issue of pleasing people. I will not be involved. I'm, I'm, my, my purp the purpose of my life is to please God and uh, to tell the truth and to spread the truth. Whether people like it or not, whether hierarchy likes it or not, I know a lot of pastors in high places, they encourage me, they write to me, I have friends at the General Conference. I have friends in different divisions uh, all over the world. People in higher positions support and pray for me. It's not, it's not the whole position of the church. It's the few men who would like to control God's work. I believe Pastor Wilson is surrounded by enemies of God's work. I believe, he's, I believe at the General Conference there are people in high positions that do not want to see the Advent message spread and the Three Angels message spread uh, in education, in health work, in our schools of theology. And, and so therefore, uh, I'm not really taking this personally, I'm taking it as the enemies that are pressuring Pastor Wilson to do this, and of course he gave into it, so he's responsible for his own letter, but he'll have to report to God on that. I have to report to God too, and you have to report to God. Some people believe that there's a lot of pressure on some people. You know what? It's pressure on everybody. Pastor Wilson's under pressure, division presidents are under pressure, union presidents, pastors, church members, everybody's under pressure. We're in, the, we're in a shaking time. It is time to make a decision right now and choose what side you're on. On the side of truth, on the side uh, of, of liberty, religious liberty, on the side of allowing people to follow their conscience and, and, and a, on a, obedience to God, or on politics. Uh, one pastor here in Bolivia just recently came to us and told us that uh, we are to obey man until the Sunday law comes, and then we are to obey God. Well, I have, I have news for those kind of people that believe that. If we don't follow the Lamb now, we won't follow the Lamb later. We have to learn to follow what God says now if we're going to follow Him later. So I've made my decision. I hope you've made yours. I hope this process teaches you to remain firm on what you believe and to do what God wants you to do, regardless of the consequences. There's great joy in knowing that God is happy with you. And I have great joy and peace because I know God, I make mistakes and I have to ask God to forgive me. But one thing I do know is God is happy with our work and He's blessing us, protecting us, and there's greater work ahead and I pray that I will always please Him. And, and if men want to work together to obey God, let's work together. And if men choose not to, they must go by themselves because I'm not going that direction. God bless. Thank you. Um, I have another to, question. Just to clear it up, just, just to, okay. to get it out in the open. There are some who say that you are not a a um, ordained minister of the Seventh-day Adventist Church anymore. Is that correct? It's not correct. Uh, I am an ordained uh, minister of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. My membership has never been in question. Uh, uh, I have my membership in Venezuela. Uh, nothing has... I've never been disciplined by the church. I've never... That's never been called into question. My ordination has never been... Uh, the, the church has the right to deal with it if they want to. They have not chosen to do that. At this point, I have no... I have not committed a sin or something that would justify taking away my ordination and uh, so far it has not been touched. I don't know what God will do, allow in the future, but at this moment uh, my ordination 
has not been touched, and I am still an ordained member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and a faithful member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church.